Another thing a lot of people have confusion about or are confused or not exactly sure what it does. If there's one button in the airplane, and as, as far as the autopilot is concerned, that intimidates many pilots due to their lack of understanding of what it does, is the approach button right there, APR. If you ask many pilots, not by, by no means am I saying all pilots, but many pilots, many pilots, if you ask them, hey, what does the approach button do? Give me a simple explanation as to what the approach button does. And many people aren't quite sure. They press it every time they fly IFR, um, and it kind of worked for them up to this point, but they're not 100% sure what that button does in simple layman's terms. Um, so let's talk about that and let's put an end to any confusion or even intimidation of this approach button. So check it out. To fully understand what the approach button does, let's first talk about the nav button. Station Air 15 Golf traffic, two o'clock and seven miles southwest bound is a Boeing 737. They're at 9,800 descending. All right, roger that looking go, one two five golf. In order to understand that, in order to understand the approach button, let's let's talk about the nav button. So for the, for us who know who use this autopilot, know that if I'm on head, if we're on heading mode, and we are on an intercept. Air one five golf traffic is no factor. They're at nine thousand and they're descending. Contact Delta approach one two four point five five. Roger that, thanks, uh, 2455, one, two, one, five, go. About seven miles west of Daggett, looking for flight following back to Van Nuys. And so let's first talk about the nav button. So if we are in a heading, right, we're in heading mode, and we are in an intercept heading with a course, Let's say we have an airway or something. If we are in heading and we press nav, what would happen? Well, we would have GPS show up to the left. We would have GPS show up to the left of the big green heading on the scoreboard, and that means that GPS is armed. It's on standby. And as we continue flying on that heading, once we reach closer to that course and the needle comes in, the plane automatically will intercept, turn, intercept that course and GPS will switch, heading will go away and GPS mode will become active, right? So we all know that, we use that. Let me just check in. That approach, good morning, Station Air 1215 Golf level, 9,500. November 1215 Golf, Joshua Approach, Palm Bell, 3005. 3005, 1215 Golf. So we know that when in heading mode, with the nav button pressed, the plane will intercept that course and automatically switch to GPS mode and make heading mode go away. So another way to think of this nav button, we could think of it November as zero three, Charlie. when we when we press this nav button while on a heading, what we're essentially doing is we're arming the right left or the horizontal navigation of the airplane to track to intercept and track our course. So here's what the approach button does. It's really simple. And this is why if I, if it were up to me, I would call this button the arm button, not the approach button. All the approach button does, you ready for this? Is it arms not only the right left horizontal navigation like we said a moment ago the nav button would but the approach button arms both the right left horizontal and the up down vertical so rather than give us an extra button or rather than have us need to press two buttons every time we show up to an ILS approach where we have right left the needle the course and the glide slope up down rather than us having to press nav because remember when you show up to an approach you're on heading so rather than having us need to press nav for the plane to turn and intercept the course and then on top of that press another button called glide slope for the plane to intercept and descend following the glide slope rather than the pilot needing to press two buttons guess what all the pilot needs to do is press one button that button is called approach 
All the approach button does is it arms the right-left horizontal navigation as well as the up-down vertical navigation in one press. So you could think of this button as two birds with one stone. It's the arm button. That's all this button does. That's all it does. If I press it right now, nothing happens because I don't have an approach loaded. But if I had an approach load, all we would see is the GP or GS, depending if it's a uh, ground-based or uh, uh, GPS, uh, RNAV, would show up here in white and standby because I'm already in GPS. That's all this button does. Think of the approach button as it arms 3D and the nav button as it arms 2D. Nav button is right left, approach button is right left and up down. So when you show up to an approach, when you press the approach button, all it does is it arms your GPS to intercept and track the course, and it arms your glide slope or glide path to intercept and track your glide slope or glide path to the runway. So one more time, the approach button is simple. All it does is it arms your right-left horizontal and up-down vertical navigation as you show up to an approach. Knowing that, we now also know when we could or should press it and when we shouldn't. Example, if we are on heading, radar vectors to the final approach course, and ATC tells us, 1215 Golf, turn left, heading 310, intercept final. Which one out of what I just talked about would we press? Well, did ATC tell us clear approach, meaning we could descend per the approach plate minimums or altitudes? No, they haven't. All they said is intercept final. So all they want us to do is intercept the approach on a horizontal, from a horizontal, on a horizontal basis, not a vertical. November Don't change your altitude. Contact approach 133.65. Approach, good morning, station air, 1215 golf, level 9500. Station air, 1215 golf, gas approach, airways up to 0 0 All they told you to do is intercept final on a horizontal, in a horizontal way. So we won't press approach. All we would press is the nav button. So the GPS, when the needle comes in, takes over the heading. But if we're showing up on radar vectors and uh, the, uh, we're at the altitude that we want to show up to our final approach, we're just getting vectors outside our final approach, meaning we don't have any more step downs to do. And ATC tells us, turn left heading 310, cleared ILS 20 right approach. Guess what? Now we, enter, we arm the 3D because we're cleared for the approach. So we're cleared to both intercept the right-left course and intercept the up-down glide slope or glide path. Does that make sense? That's all the approach button does. So if you have this plane and you're confused by the approach button, create a little sticker and put the sticker over there and call that sticker 3D, call that sticker arm, Call it whatever you want to call it in order for you to better understand what your buttons do. That's it. That's all there is to it. The approach button arms the horizontal and vertical in one press. The nav button only arms the horizontal. That's it. Knowing this, you know exactly when to press it, when not to press it, depending on the instruction you receive from ATC. Really, really, really simple stuff. I hope this makes sense. It's really as simple as it sounds. There's nothing to it. So I hope that cleared up some confusion for people regarding the approach button on your um, autopilot buttons. So there we are.